This is the video for lesson 102b on my website, Multiplying and Dividing Signed Numbers. This is a very important lesson, so make sure that you fully understand it. If you have difficulty with this lesson, you're going to have tremendous difficulty when we move on to algebra, so make sure that you fully understand. Up until now, we've only been multiplying and dividing positive numbers. In this lesson, we're going to introduce negative numbers, and we'll see what to do about that. It turns out that there's just a few simple rules that we have to memorize, and once we do, we'll be all set to handle this. Let's take a look at a few examples. For this first example, I'd like to multiply 3 times 5. Now, notice I've used what we call a middle dot to represent multiplication. Now that we're about to move on to algebra, we can no longer use an x to represent multiplication like we have been because the x has a special meaning in algebra. So get used to seeing this middle dot, which just means multiplication. It's not a decimal point, it's just a little dot that means to multiply. And we know that 3 times 5 is 15. But we're building up some rules for multiplication, so we can see that a positive number times a positive number, we know will always be a positive number. Okay, now we're going to try multiplying a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative. Remember that we can do multiplication in, in any order that we'd like. We call that the commutative property. For this example, I'm going to multiply negative 7 times 3. Now, one way to think about this is to remember that we can think of a negative number as a debt. We learned that two lessons ago. So we can think of this as I owe $7 to three different people. I have a debt of 7 three times over. And that means that I owe $21. So we'll write negative 21. Now, it turns out that the rule is a positive times a negative is always a negative. And remember, we can look at this as a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative. The order doesn't matter. Another thing that doesn't matter is which number has the negative and which number is the positive. That has, in multiplication, it just doesn't matter. Anytime we have a positive times a negative, Anytime we have numbers that are opposite signs, the answer is always negative. So let's write that. Okay, so all you have to do is remember that when the signs are the same, the answer is positive. When the signs are opposite, the answer is always negative. The numbers themselves don't matter. We just multiply the numbers, and if the signs are opposite, the answer is negative. Just remember that rule. Now, for this next example, I'd like to multiply two negative numbers. So I have negative 2 times negative 6. Now there isn't any great real world analogy for when we would have to do this, and sometimes students are not happy about that. We just have to memorize a rule. The rule is that whenever the signs match, whether they're both positive or both negative, whenever the signs match, the answer is always positive. So in this case, I'll just multiply 2 times 6 and get 12, and my answer is positive. So we have matching signs that are both negative, and the answer will always be positive in that case. So just remember those rules, and you won't have any trouble at all with multiplying signed numbers. You do have to be careful, though, in remembering that these rules have nothing to do with adding and subtracting signed numbers. In the previous few lessons we learned about that, don't confuse these rules with what we learned there. We're now going to divide signed numbers, and the good news is that the rules are exactly the same. So let's take a look at some examples. I'm going to do a positive divided by a positive. This is one of the ways of representing division. I could have used our little division sign like we've seen, or I could have done 15 over 3. This is just a short way of writing it. 15 divided by 3, we know is 5, and since our rule is since our rules for multiplication and division are the same, we can say a positive divided by a positive is always positive. It's the identical rules. Okay, now let's do a positive divided by a negative. Actually, for this first example, I'm going to do a negative divided by a positive. Negative 12 divided by 4. Okay, well first we'll do the 12 divided by 4 and get 3. And according to our rule, whenever we have opposite signs, the answer is always negative. So my answer is negative 3. So a positive 
divided by a negative, opposite signs is always negative. Let's just do another example like this, just to show that the answer will be negative. For this example, I'm going to do 18 divided by negative 2, so a positive divided by a negative. Okay, and first I realize that I have to correct myself here. What I did in this example was a negative divided by a positive. But again, all that mattered was that the signs were opposite. The signs were not matching. In this example, we happen to have a positive divided by a negative. I'll write 9 to begin with, and then remember the rule that opposite signs means negative. So we can say a positive divided by a negative, since the signs are opposite, since the signs do not match, that's also negative. Okay. Now for the final example, I'm going to do a negative divided by a negative. I have for this example negative 50. Negative 50 divided by negative 10. Okay, first I'll do 50 divided by 10, and that's 5. And then I see that the signs match. We have matching signs, which means the answer will always be positive. So in this case, a negative divided by a negative, the signs match. So the answer is always positive, regardless of what numbers are involved. It may seem like a lot, but these are really just three simple rules. The rules for multiplication are exactly the same as for division. Just make sure that you remember these rules and you'll be all set for problems like this. We'll work with this much more in upcoming lessons.